here with Rafe Idle Manku, having a look through some of the papers this morning. An extraordinary story which hasn't actually made any of the papers that I've seen so far, but we must discuss. This is about Metro yesterday, uh, you know, the free newspaper that's published all over the place. Uh, they get different versions of different cities. Um, they had a piece in their paper about Doctor Who, which was quite extraordinary over the course of the weekend, written by their entertainment reporter, uh, Asia Iftikar, I think her name is, um, about basically how uh, Doctor Who, if you're a white male, if you're a white male and a heterosexual, Doctor Who is not for you anymore. Um, quite an incredible piece. Yeah, the left always say that the right is stoking the culture wars. Yes. Um, <laughs> sorry, yeah. actually, we're having this forced down our throat all the time. Right. A remarkably silly piece written by this woman I mean, who said that Doctor Who was never created for white straight men. No. Uh, then she acknowledged that she, she, she was... Uh, tell that to William Hartnell and yes. John Pertwee. They were right. too busy fighting the Dalek and wars Tom to Baker. worry about the culture wars. And you know? Tom Baker. <laughs> and Tom Baker. Right. Um, but then she says, I've only been watching for the last 15 years. Well, yes, the last 15 years have seen the rise of Wokery and Doctor yes. Who. That's been the problem. Right. That's why it's actually falling. And she then <laughs> runs through a whole series of characters that have been brought in which have been sort of what you might describe as particularly ridiculously woke. But the backlash on this was so remarkable that Metro had to shut down their Twitter account right which is hilarious yeah well always you know the people the people who always talk about tolerance and free speech are very quick to put off the comments and silence the comments on these tweets and so forth but the fact is you know one of the reasons that doctor who has been hemorrhaging viewership mm. is because it's become so divisive you know you can't watch the thing now without being constantly lectured no. and hectored at no and it just once again goes to show that you know the way that companies are willing to self-harm and destroy their brands right. for the interests of pursuing and one ideology. of the stories we did recently because it makes an appearance on Plank of the Week on a fairly regular basis, Doctor Who, uh, was they brought an alien into the, the show uh, who was gender neutral. And you're kind of going, well, surely aliens are gender neutral anyway. Why make a big deal out of it? You know, nobody said, is E.T. gender neutral? Uh, is E.T. a bloke or is E.T. a woman or is E.T. non-binary? Nobody cared. Well, actually, now that you say that, have there been any female Daleks? I, I can't actually... <laughs> and like, uh, how long till cyber men become cyber people? Well, that was I one of the more ridiculous <laughs> ones, where they made um, Davros, you know, the man who was the sort of creator of the Daleks, and supposedly a kind of, you know, half man, half Dalek. They changed the way he looked, because they said it's not right to make him look like he's disabled, because that would suggest that all disabled people are evil. Oh, well, you're kind of going, sorry? No, I don't really see that. But we've also got the issue now of this new chap who's the Doctor Who, this, this, this young black gay chap who said that he wants to make sure that race becomes a central theme of his tenure right. uh, as Doctor Who. Great. And he's like, why on earth does your identity have to come into everything? I you know. know. It's just it's so nonsensical. Right. And it just seems to me that you're just going to be further alienating the great British public. Yeah. I mean, the people that watch BBC One and these sort of channels don't really buy into all no. of this sort of stuff. You know, I mean, they've just cancelled their, their soap opera Doctors which is w watched by elderly pensioners. Yes. They're the last group that you want to have yeah. to be constantly. Fair, <laughs> it's the only place you can see a doctor as well, you know, is on BBC One. Never mind, you can't anymore. Let's talk about civil servants because um, amongst all the various strikes that they're planning to do because they don't like the sound of uh, what the government wants, they're now trying to block plans, government plans, to publish league tables of migrant statistics for crime uh, and the highest rates of crime, depending on what nationality they are, which seems to me to be a pretty useful exercise. There's nothing wrong with having more information. The more information we get, the better. Yeah. And the fact that the civil service are trying to block this should send up alarm signals about what's actually happening Shouldn't within it? our civil service. Yeah. We've seen a similar thing with the ONS, the Office for National Statistics, yes. not wanting to publish details about the nationality of uh, p criminals in yeah. this country who are in our prisons and so forth. Right. You can tell what the, uh, their ethnicity is. And why is. do they want to keep it secret would be well, my question. This is it, because clearly they are uncomfortable with the, with the hard facts and mm. what they show. And what Denmark has shown, for example, is that there are certain... There are, there are over 40 nationalities who commit more crimes than mm. the Danes, yeah. whereas on the other hand, people from um, Japan, America, Australia and India commit fewer crimes yes. than Danes. And it's important to have this information because what, once you have that, you can start scrutinizing visa applications from certain nationalities right. more than others. You know, just remember D Donald Trump Jr. when he controversially said, if you give me a, a bowl of M&Ms, but I know that two of them are poisoned, right. I'm not going to take a handful out right. of it, right? We need to have the statistics at our hands and fingertips so we can know which country we should be more welcoming to yeah. and which ones, quite frankly, we should say no. We and don't it seems want like to. common sense. And to be fair, the government does want to bring this in, but the civil servants do not. And I mean, this is...
par for the course for them, isn't it? But you have to remember, you know, the Home Office acceptance rates for asylum applicants is several times higher what it is in many European countries. Yes. Uh, 70, I think it was 72% of asylum applications are, are, are approved, which is an astonishingly mm. high number. There is clearly a, a de of evidence here, sort of, a, you know, I don't want to say a fifth column, but there's certainly elements within the civil service who are working against the British national interest, and they see themselves as essentially fighting a counter-offensive against the establishment Tory government, yeah. and that's what we have here. But again, why is the government doing this now? Because I can't see Labour ever going forward with something like this. In fact, Labour would probably reverse this sort of a decision. Mm. The Tories had a decade to put this into effect, and they should have done so, because this is really important information. We've just had you know, a, a woman murdered on the streets of London yeah. uh, in, uh, in Burns Oak recently yeah. by, I think it was a Somali yes. who did that. These are important dis dis the discussions. We need to have mature mm. discussions yeah. about the type of people who are coming with here. With the information which is relevant with, with, with to, with to those kinds of discussions. One final one. Process groups, this is this will bring a, a warm smile to those of you who have been listening to me for many years uh, saying this is exactly what should happen. Protest groups such as Just Stop Oil and Palestine Action could be banned in a similar way to terror organisations under plans to update the law to deal with extreme left demonstrations. Yeah, Ta -da! about time. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a free speech fundamentalist, but that doesn't mean you have the right to disrupt other people's no. lives or to cause criminal damage. And for some reason, when crimes are committed by people on the left, everyone's is very forgiving. Like that recently, that elderly couple yes. who tried to attack the Magna Carta. Yeah. And somehow, because they're dottery old ladies and gentlemen, they seem to be, they get away with it. Yeah. We have to be serious here. There's real harm being caused to this nation's economy mm. and society and just the ability of people to go about their daily lives. Yeah. And it's time we stopped it. Exactly right. Rafe, great to see you. Thank you very much indeed.